we wanted to bring that name back and we were thinking about a name for this place for a few months. And we had like an ongoing like group chat with like my brothers, my sister and I, and it was like throwing stuff out like, ah, yeah, it's all right, or yeah, no, but it's always nice to have meaning behind something. And we're like, hey, how about the name Faces? Everyone was just like on board, which is so rare when you have five of us involved in like figuring out a name for the business. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Brew Roots, where we tell the stories behind your favorite beer. This is Sound Guy Ryan, and joining me today is Erica. Just me. Just you. <laughs> Matt is uh, doing some work things, but we got this taken care of. We're just going to do a quick little intro. Yeah, like it, pros. Like absolute pros. Yes, you nailed it. <laughs> nailed it, Erica. Boom. So this week, we got an awesome guest. We got Faces. Finally. It's yes. been in the making, I think, for a year plus. Um, oh, way more than a year. <laughs> so the, my very first on-site interview with Matt was Faces when they were in some, like, contracting, construction Yeah, you know, they were, building. like, not... I mean, they were, like, a thing, kind of, but they weren't yeah. really a thing. Yeah, I think they had purchased um, or just yeah. like almost purchased it yeah um which is where they are now uh which is in the mold, old Malden bank um it's pretty pretty cool it's um it's gorgeous cool. it's, it's gorgeous it is it's yeah. one of my favorite um breweries for sure just because their place is so pretty <laughs> yeah um but other than that we just want to make this nice and short uh erica do you have any upcoming news um just the big one this past week or well this week in general started on wednesday the 7th is uh, new hampshire beer week so make sure you get up there and support your local beer up in new hampshire they have some pretty amazing stuff going on um they're also doing a pink boots beer trail which is really cool um we shared it on our socials you can also find it on new hampshire beer trail social media as well so that's pretty cool um otherwise i also tried uh, a sour ipa for the first time this past wow week. how was it it kind of blew my mind Ew. Ew, it was it was really good um so like it had some nice aroma of like an ipa but mm -hmm. then it was like sour a little tart yeah a little tart now was it, was it like nice. tart or is it kind of like farmhousey tart yeah 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 so it was um the cosmic connection by victory brewery mm -hmm. yeah brewing yep. sorry um i got that from craft beer cellar in belmont nice um yeah no good stuff good stuff yeah i just been doing you know, my regular my regular stuff been yeah. going through yeah. the fridge i got some four star farm i nice. finally finished good um what else uh some more widow maker and some yeah. medusa i think nice. i'm finally nice. done with that um and just true north sylvaticus you know Huge. yeah my, cool. my pit stops so when cool. i need to take a break from doing my thesis <laughs> you know procrastinating yeah. right right yeah. the usual procrastination but yeah i'd say uh without further ado let's just get on to this episode because it was not? a little bit of a longer one it is um, so we don't want to keep yeah. you away for too long because this episode's awesome we want to make sure you enjoy it yeah so uh until next week cheers cheers so we're here on location in Malden, Massachusetts. Ooh. Right? Yeah. And uh, you may know a thing or two about this brewery. And we have a funny story because we recorded this episode two and a half years ago. Before yes. Erica was even... I wasn't even around. You weren't around. Nope. You hadn't been born yet. I wasn't yet. even born yeah. yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ryan was still... He was a little baby. He still had his, his baby teeth. Yep. yep. And... Uh, no ponytail. We weren't even in a beautiful building. We we're in a in a shop uh, in Wake, really Wakefield, shop. Winchester, Winchester, one well, of those W towns. I got Malden right at least. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and if you know anything about that backstory, you know where we're at. Hmm. Where are we? Well, we're at Faces in Malden, nice. of course. Of course. Uh, and we're here with with Danny, Eddie, and Dan. What's up, guys? What's, What's up, guys? going on? Ooh. Danny being the only real two-time guest, you may have heard her before. She's legit. She's legit. Yeah. Three-peat. Three-peat. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so I'm excited to do this one because when we did the interview, Faces was on paper. It was a physical location, but you hadn't cut the ribbon. You haven't, hadn't even broken ground on the, the location. I think we started uh, construction about a month after that interview. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I remember we were two days away from releasing the episode. And uh, Eddie sent me a text. And he's like, 
don't everything's re- changed. Don't <laughs> release the episode. Everything's changed. And since then, we've been trying to plan an episode. And COVID happened. And we're here today. One thing after another. But here we are. But I think that's pretty cool because we're here pretty much a year after you opened. Right? Pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, we're May 30th last year. Yeah, May 30th. Nice. So it's March. That's yes. St. Good, good timing, day. if you will. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the best yeah. time. Yeah. Um, but we start every podcast asking our guests uh, their first memory of beer and the role at the brewery. So take it away. Uh, first memory of beer? Oh, it's got to be... My parents aren't big beer drinkers, um, but every time my dad would grill in the middle of summer, there was always like a beer there. Uh, so it was like Heineken or Amstel Light, something like that. But he was always cool. He'd be like, hey, you want a sip of it? Here you go. You don't like it? Okay, fine. Like, <laughs> So that was my first memory of beer. Nice. That's good. He wasn't like, you definitely need to drink, drink it. No. Drink it. Yeah. He was like, it's all right if you don't like it. One you day know. you're opening a brewery. Yeah. <laughs> um, and your role? More. Your role at the brewery? Uh, I am uh, owner of the brewery, cool. with along with my uh, my siblings, so three brothers and sister. Yeah. I'm just representing all of them right now. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my first memory of beer, uh, probably four years old. My one of my dad's cousin's weddings, and I was a big apple juice person when I was a kid. And I just, you know, little kid, you go and you grab off a table, you're too short to see what it is, and I was just like, oh, okay, boom. And I started crying, I did not like the taste of it. It was some light beer that, you know, like the cream ale sitting in front of it, probably just to a kid looked like apple juice, and I just swigged it and did not have a good day. (laughs) (laughs) Gonna have a bad time. I guess my story is kind of similar to Dan's. My dad uh, looks like the Marlboro Man. Uh, he's always mm. been a uh, Coors Banquet, only Coors Banquet, only Colorado Kool Aid. And I remember any time ever going out to eat when we were kids, because this would be like the early 90s, so he'd always, I'll take a Coors regular every single time the waitress would be like, I have Coors Light. And every <laughs> single time, what do you mean you don't have Coors Banquet? And so it's like, <laughs> Every time we went out to eat, I have this. I had this anxiety where I'm like, they're not going to have it. He's going to ask that question. And he's surprised every time. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of my earliest memory of beer. Nice. Yeah. And then your roles, both of you. Um, we're both the brewers. Cool. And we anything brewing related, two of us. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Every beer you've had in this place, it's them all along. So from taking in grain deliveries like we did earlier today till packing out and moving cans to walk-ins. It's all these guys, and we give a hand to whenever we can. Yeah. Nice. We are operations directors slash brewers <laughs> slash celebrant <Janitors>. slash <laughs> lab slash yep. um, packaging everything. Slash <laughs> formulations, yeah. R&D. R&D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so life before faces, uh, what did you guys do before? So before Faces, um, my family and I used to own and operate a bowling alley in Cambridge. And we kind of got into craft beer there. Uh, it was probably about seven years ago, eight years ago is when we, uh, we opened up. We started working. Bowling alley was existing, uh, but we started getting into craft beer. Uh, Budweiser was, let's just say some companies were investing into their own brand. And uh, they would encourage you in certain ways to take on their drafts. Uh, we kind of got into like... Woodmer Brothers and Kona and all those like CBA brands. And from there, uh, we found that our customers were really getting into it and asking us what was new. We got to Allagash, Lagunitas, uh, some of those other styles that were really popular, Sierra Nevada, Oscar Blues. And that kind of got us really into local, local brands as soon as they started coming around. Night Shift, Mystic, Exhibit A. Uh, so we kind of gained some relationships with people in the area that um, really had some like powerful brands and they're all new and they're all super local and once the bowling alley we decided to sell it we're like hey you know let's let's brew some beer let's do this (laughs) ourselves like and let's use our relationships that we've made with these individual brands the salespeople, the owners and let's uh, see where we can go with it and uh, so far we've we've done some of that stuff you know between relationships with jack's abbey you have a bunch of existing relationships for from places you've worked at as far as uh Lone Pine and Geary's and just other people you've brewed with along the way. Um, that got us a lot of the collaborations that we had. Yeah. Icarus and yeah. Bentwater. And, I mean, the list goes on. Yeah. And then we ended up just doing a collab with uh, Exhibit A. Yeah. Yeah. Um, awesome. So that was my background. Uh, once we closed, we decided we were going to get 
into a, the actual bigger restaurant business where we could do elevated pub food, uh, as well as brew our own beer. We weren't going to brew the beer ourselves, so we brought these two guys on board. And um, you know, we had talked a little bit about how Eddie and I had met. We can touch down on that in a bit, but uh, yeah, brought in Danny and Eddie, and um, it's been going great. So the rest is history. Yeah, the rest is history. Here we history. are. As they say. Uh, it, what was life? Um, so for me, I've been. Uh, my background is uh, biochemistry and cellular molecular biology. I was in school until me and Dan started talking about this, and um, my focus was just on was on yeast genetics specifically for the brewing industry. So that's, that's um, helpful. <laughs> and developing yeast strains for brewing, um, and that's that's how I got into it because I was home brewing. Um, Matt, Ryan, you guys saw the system I had at my in Winchester, at my dad's shop, and uh, I just I was using that for research for yeast development, and just we'll talk about later how we got involved, but that's uh, basically how how it happened. Just I started going down yeah. on weekends, brewing beer, hanging yep. out, having a few, and just talking about you know what we had in common, what styles we liked, and. Yep. You know, traditional versus like new school kind of brewing techniques, and basically just had a fun time hanging out, brewing yeah. some beer, yeah, yeah, talking beer. And you, you kind of joined in a little bit on that, like yeah. last January. Yeah, or maybe. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, no, it was in January. 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 The worst kept secret that you were joining faces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember we had a live stream, and you're like, "Oh, formally of Lone Pine," or like, yeah. "Oh, okay." Uh, <laughs> One of those things where my background was not commercial brewing at all. Like, yeah. I understand what's going on, but Danielle's it's experience not quite the same. Yeah, right, was right. the missing link to everything we were looking for. <laughs> That's definitely one of those. Um, <laughs> like I remember working in bars and restaurants in New York City for a long time, and it, if you would get a resume where it's like, "Oh, you went to bartending school." <laughs> yeah. That's cute. That's cute. But, like, <laughs> You're about to get your ass kicked. Yeah, no, the amount of times, like, I mean, I stopped just being like, like putting my head down and being like, oh, yeah, no, I knew that, to being like, Danielle, explain exactly what's going on because I don't know and I don't want to screw this up. I want yeah. to, you know, I want to learn it because that's, I guess that's not where my background comes from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the, like, I don't understand. Science says it should be doing this. I'm like, you don't and understand. It's, it's a monster. It's a living organism. Science it does whatever it wants. <laughs> And there were certainly times, even through the setup of our brewery, like we designed the whole like layout of this whole business, and we designed the brewery. So like we had a little bit of help from the people that we ordered everything from, yeah. but it's really not a whole lot. Hey, research and, only goes so far. Yeah. So like when we designed it <laughs> and we set it up. Danny's kind of like, oh, man, I wish I knew this from the company beforehand. Or yeah. <laughs> you set this up, and meanwhile, I'm like. I don't know. I've never like I've walked through commercial breweries, but how much can you absorb when you walk through and you look around? And you're like, there's a lot of pipes and stainless. Yeah, there. right. <laughs> and this here we pretty. are, like going oh, full out like install design on a brewery, and neither one of us have worked in a commercial brewery. Before. Yeah. yeah, I definitely came on and was like, no, we're gonna change yeah. a couple. Like things. I built, like for instance, I made a bunch of uh, brewery hoses, and I was like, oh yeah, I just need to get from there to there, so it needs to be this long. And Daniel's like, why no. is this hose so long? What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I guess my my background is uh, I've been brewing professionally I think six years. So I was with uh, Gary's in Portland, Maine for I think around two, and then uh, Lone Pine for three, and then I've been down here uh, I think a year. Been yeah. about a year. Yeah. 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 I was right. It was like the week of the shutdown. Yep. You started coming here every day and helping and doing everything. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It was when you almost boarded that airplane when you uh Right. That was that, yeah, that was that was, April, that was right? like a week ago. No, that was mid March. Yeah. There like, you go. So you've been here for because you guys brewed I think the Irish stout first. No, you, the cream we brewed uh cream commander, commander first. Commander, yeah. 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 That was the second one then. <laughs> yeah. But uh you made it here in time and it was like, oh perfect. So Danny actually brewed every single beer with Eddie here. So yeah. that's awesome. Cool. Uh I guess let's talk about Dan and Eddie. How how did you guys meet? What was the what was the we actually met at a moment. Pink Boots meeting, Ooh. and you were there too. Yes. Uh, and yeah. you were there. And yeah. you were there. Erica was there. <laughs> you were all there. Yeah, my fiance used to work over at Night Shift as a beer tender, and um, I actually recognized, I thought I recognized the tattoo Danielle has on her hand, yep. 
and she was standing next to me <laughs> ordering a beer, and I was just like, oh, because my friend is a, I saw that she was wearing a Lone Pine shirt, and one yeah. of my friends is a tattoo artist in Portland, so I was just like, shot in the dark, the did he do your tattoo? <laughs> and then we just started talking, and then we ended up going yeah. up and visiting her and talking, and we just became friends, me, nice. her, and my fiance. So uh, yeah, that's how we got her on. And then uh, last January, we started talking about her uh, looking for a job, and I yep. talked to Dan because there. I mean, it was starting to become evident that I need. You know, <laughs> this was as we said. I, there's only research only goes so far. Right, I had right. no experience in the commercial yep. uh, brewing industry, and that's how Danielle got involved. Basically, Danny Basically. came down here when we were doing construction, and then yep. we had a few drinks here and across the street at Hugh O'Neill's. Yep, and just kind of talking and like, hey. Do you want to do this? Yeah, I'm on board. All right. Yeah, let's, let's, do this. This. Yeah. let's brew some beer. <laughs> Done. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, so I'm curious, Ed and Dan, how did you guys meet? Uh, you said you were you know, shooting a shit, brewing beer, but what was the... Eddie, you can kind of take this story away because yeah. it started with you. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so I knew I wanted to get involved in the brewing industry, mm -hmm. and I'd kind of been talking to some people, and nothing was, like, panning out. And... Um, I was working for my dad's landscaping company at the time. It was right after I stopped grad school. And I was actually at Dan's parents' house and... Doing sprinklers? Doing blowing sprinklers. Out, blowing out sprinklers. <laughs> blowing out sprinkler, <laughs> blowing out sprinkler <laughs> systems for yeah. the winter. Nice. This was probably like November 2017. Yeah. And... Your dad was removing trees at my house at the time, too. Yes. And uh, Mrs. Martinetti asked... Who I met downstairs. She's like... My mom was out back. Yeah, she was painting picnic, picnic tables. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she was awesome. And <laughs> she asked me, because our, our families are friends, if I was still trying to open a brewery myself. And I said, yes. And she said, I think my children still want to do the same thing. So she's like, let me take your phone number and email address down. I'm going to give it to my oldest. And I was like, okay. It wasn't even 30 minutes before Dan oh, texted geez. me and we never stopped talking. I was like, yo, man, I got a case of like heady topper over there. Yeah. I was Alchemist, because yeah. we just went on my honeymoon. Right. And so Lisa and I went on the honeymoon. Of course, we stopped at, we stayed at Von Trapp and then oh, went nice. to Alchemist. Nice. Yep, yep. She's well, like, you kind of planned this out, didn't you? And I'm like, nah. I yeah. want to come <laughs> yeah. So uh, I brought back a case of like Alchemist. Yeah. Hey, do you want to come over and drink some Alchemist and talk? And so we like, talked about it and basically just. Like, hey, we'll brew next weekend and yep. hang out, and have a couple beers and talk about it. And, uh, all kind of progressed yep. uh, until we found the building. There was a... It's like, Eddie, I found a building. Could you say there was a <laughs> oh, <damn>. progression? <laughs> there was a progression, yeah. Get out. And, uh, <laughs> oh. Yes. <laughs> no, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about that progression, I guess. No, um, but you said that all of a sudden there was a building. I mean... How fast did this idea turn to reality? So turn to reality. Yeah. It kind of worked yeah. into where we were at um, as far as our bowling alley was concerned. Uh, we knew that it, was gonna be, it wasn't going to be there forever. Uh, my father and his brother were the two owners, and things were kind of kind of part ways at that point. Um, decided to sell the building, which we kind of knew was like eventually going to happen anyway. It was imminent. Writing on the wall, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was for a long time. We ran it. Uh, we did a great job. We really drummed business up quite a bit. But at that point, we knew we wanted to look for the next thing, and it was going to be a restaurant. Uh, we just didn't have a nice space. We wanted to buy our own building to do it in. It's tough to spend a whole lot of money on somebody else's property and run a business successfully. Right. Uh, but we got lucky <laughs> enough that we found this place. It was uh, for sale online. And we came, we took a look in August, and we had sold the, the bowling alley in August, so same month. And uh, it took until the end of December of, what was that, 18? Two, no, it was 17. It was December of 18. And then it was, we started construction. Yeah, it was 18, right. We started construction in, no, it was, it was 17. 17. Yeah, it was 17. We bought the building at the end of 2017, so it was yeah. right after we talked to you guys. We bought the building at like, the end of the month. Yeah. No, they were a year later. They were 2018. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Because you broke ground like a month later after us. You were like, we're, it, we're yeah, pitching to break yeah. ground. It was, yeah. Yeah. it was a year of licensing. Uh, between, wow. Because you're ordering all these tanks. You're like, all right, I need to get this stuff licensed before I go and invest right. X amount of dollars, half a million dollars in brewing equipment. Like, this stuff is not cheap. 
And then you have to hope that you don't get lucky and somebody walks away with your money or a company goes out of business. So you're like, <laughs> right. make these now and ship them as quickly as you can. I don't care if I have a place to put them or not. Yeah. Uh, so it's definitely nerve wracking um, ordering all that equipment. But yeah. that basically explains the timeline there. So sold the bowling alley in August, bought this place in December and uh, was kind of just all in planning at that point and that, until we started construction a year after that. Yeah. I'll never. And for those who don't know, this used to be a bank, correct? Yes. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. I'll never forget Dan. We talked about a couple things before. And this was obviously before Danielle was on board. But uh, <laughs> one day he calls me. He's like, hey, everything else, we're not doing that. He's like, meet me at this address. And I came here. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Guess we're not doing any of those other things. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That was good news. It was always definitely good news. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So before we get too much further, let's uh, scoot on to our sponsors. Take it away, Ryan. Did you know that your favorite Massachusetts breweries use hops from a local family-owned hop farm right here in Massachusetts? Our friends over at Four Star Farms are there for you whether you're a commercial brewery or a small batch home brewer. Make sure to head over to their website today and get your hands on some of the best and freshest hops available locally. Cheers. Cheers. At our local homebrew shop, Beer and Wine Hobby, you can get everything you need to make beer, wine, cider, cheese, and more. Not sure where to start? They have knowledgeable staff there to help. Beer and Wine Hobby is family-owned and located in Danvers, Massachusetts. Visit their website, beer-wine.com, and use our promo code BREWROOTS for 10% off your online order today. Shirks on Tap is the box subscription service where you can get some of the dopest brewery t-shirts out there. I'm talking breweries from Dallas, San Diego, and even our home area of New England. And you might ask, how do I get my hands on some? To get your first box for $5, click the link below in our description, or head on over to our website, breweries.com. Remember, drink better beer, wear better shirts. We are back. After that amazing word from do, our do, sponsors. Do. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so I was chatting with my parents and I said, I'm going to Faces in Malden. And this area is, my dad grew up in Everett. He knows Malden. My grandma lived in Malden. My dad goes, Faces? That was like a club back in the day. Is that is that true? <laughs> or like a nightclub? Or am I getting that completely wrong? He mentioned something like that. And he's like, is that the same place? And I was like, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, no, your dad's right. Uh, <laughs> Damn it. I want to tell him he's wrong. He's right. <laughs> You're wrong, Dad. <laughs> so next door to the bowling alley that we used to run, uh, my father and his brothers opened up a disco back in Ooh, the 70s. Ooh, nice. Okay. So it was an existing club, and uh, they took it over, and it was called Faces. And okay. There's a whole story behind that, but um, we wanted to bring that name back, and we were thinking about a name for this place for a few months. And we had like an ongoing like group chat with like, my brothers, my sister, and I, and it was like throwing stuff out like, <laughs> ah, yeah, it's all right, or yeah, no, but... It's always nice to have meaning behind something. And we're mm -hmm. like, hey, how about the name Faces? And everyone was just like on board, which is so rare when you have five yes. of us involved yeah. <laughs> and like figuring out a name for the business. And uh, my brother Bob ended up coming up with a logo for it. Everyone's like, what's the meaning behind the logo? I'm like, it's just a cool logo. We all have dogs, I guess. Uh, but um, Easy enough. <laughs> I feel like our, our brand will make the logo. It makes the name. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, we do get a lot of people that are like, oh, Faces, you're too young to remember that place. And I'm like... <laughs> There's another one now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, we were, you said December 2018, early 2019, you, you built, you start build out of this awesome building. Um, it's a former bank, like we mentioned. Uh, 2019 was an awesome year, you know. Breweries opening, you guys are building. Um, as many of our listeners know, breweries don't go to plan. You know, things get delayed and get delayed. Mm. Um, but it always seemed in my conversations with, with Eddie, like, Things were going really good. You guys were excited to open. I think the plan was always, you know, early 2019, late 2019, early 20, 2020. Yeah. Um, and then COVID hit. Uh, you guys were, what, a couple months away from opening. What was that like for you guys? Yeah, I mean, we probably could have opened. So we ended up opening up May 30th. Uh, yep. We opened up for can sales for a couple of weeks before we did an outdoor patio, which was never part of the plan here. 
lucky for us, we had a parking lot out back. So we put a tent up, we put a bunch of tables out there. Over the course of three weeks, we just, we kind of heard rumors that we're gonna be able to do outdoor seating at that point. So we did everything we could to get it going, which was a shame because you do this much work and you spend this much money in designing a whole interior of a building. We are, we're in about 7,500 square feet of space right here that we did, you know, top to bottom. And now you have people sitting in a parking lot, picnic tables with a tent <laughs> set up, and it's not really <laughs> the plan. Yeah, I remember. However, yeah. it was received really, really well. Yeah, so. For sure. I remember the tease of coming in here the first day that you guys were selling cans. I'm yeah, I remember buying cans and be like, wow, like, this place this is beautiful. This blue's beautiful, and I you're like, yeah, you can't, can't sit, sit in here. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really yeah. nice, isn't it? It's a cool place to pick up cans. <laughs> like, yep, now go around the back next to the dumpster. Bye. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> now follow the blue arrows on the floor to where you can be. And right. Can yes, <laughs> exactly. But I remember consistently hearing people, you got to go to Faces. They're brunch. They got food. They got great beer. A yeah. good atmosphere. You guys owned it. I mean, I think a lot of other breweries looked to what you were doing early in the pandemic to kind of make what they were doing, um, honestly, because I, I, I don't know if you were just the best prepared for it. And I know there's a lot of breweries out there that it's early crazy. on. Some of the breweries that started right when, you know, COVID, the shutdown started are still here and seem to be doing pretty okay. Yeah. So yeah, and I, think I don't got, know. I think <laughs> you, you guys locked lucky. out because, you know, you already had yeah. a plan doing food. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know? yeah. I, yeah. I, I didn't have to was, shut down when they said yeah. you need food with that right. meal. You didn't have like, to find well, something. Well, the kitchen's already there. Right. So. Yeah. So Nailed the only it. real pivoting for us, remember talks about how did your plan pivot, is really use of space. And, hey, you know, yeah. the tables really weren't going to be set up like this. Yeah. Uh, you know, we lost use of one of our big community tables because it's too close to the other ones, and right. there's no moving a 600-pound granite table. <laughs> Damn it! Um, <laughs> so, so that's really our only pivoting. Our concept remained exactly the same here. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's hard business overall, where you can't cram a place filled with 320 people, and right. now you know 120 people. Uh, <laughs> but we still had you know full menu, uh, liquor, wine beer and that was our original concept was that yeah. yeah we can appeal to anybody yeah we have customers that come in here that never drink our beer or don't even know we brew beer <laughs> they come in here and i'm gonna drink an old-fashioned and, old and grab you know an old, uh, pizza like that's that. cool though. you're one like of, one of the best everyone. sellers is uh, espresso martinis <laughs> sounds amazing <laughs> last week our number two seller here was espresso martinis i'm yeah. like we're a brewery and our number two seller <laughs> is espresso great. martinis like i'm cool with that like whatever yeah whatever sells huh? um one thing I did hear is you were going to have a Kino machine, and these two put me up to this. What? Where's the Kino oh, machine? Where's yeah. the Kino machine? It just so happens there's like... I brought like, the dollars even today. Come on. <laughs> it just so happens, like, there's probably 30 Kino machines within a stone's throw away from this yeah. building. So, yes. I mean, like, you could probably not, see one through a window exactly. across the street. If you want to play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I love what you guys have done with this place. I mean, you kept the charm of the building. Of the bank. Of the yeah. bank. I mean... Yeah. You wouldn't walk in and say, "Oh, there's, there's the teller station," but you see the the safe doors. You see yep. the bank door the bank doors. into the brewery. It's but, yeah. Uh, yeah. You guys kind of took the approach that like Apple takes with their buildings. I mean, Apple takes a beautiful building and keeps the integrity of the building. You didn't gut it out and make it, you know, this, you know, something completely different. Completely yeah. different. Yeah. Is that important to you guys, or just happen to work? When we had bought the building. Um, it had been, for the most part, gutted, but the vaults remained. So we kept everything we could keep to kind of keep that here for, like, the luster of the place. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we have uh, our bar back here. The two bars are both made out of old beams that held the building up. Yeah. Uh, so we saved those. We preserved them. And then the yeah. vault doors, everything from uh, the employee entrance to the uh, vessels upstairs yeah. to the two vaults that we have for private events here on the main floor. Yeah. So uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, you can sit there. Eight to ten per well, in a normal time, <laughs> yeah. ten person dining room yeah. in the main vault for the bank that you know, a lot of people's valuables were kept in for years. So it's pretty neat. That is neat. That's awesome. Um, shifting over to beer, I guess. Yeah. You guys are brewing a cream ale pretty consistently, and that's not very common. You know, I don't see too many of those. Um, that was a day one beer for you. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Like yep. why? It was, the first, it was the first beer that was brewed on this system. Yeah. That's awesome. Instead of brewing like all these crazy hype beers, like why? the amazing cream ale <laughs> um well from so you have to think of it as we're not just a brewery people yeah. are coming and sitting down ipas are great we love brewing ipas mm -hmm. but if you sit down and want to have you know you're just 
coming in for a casual drink or something, or you're sitting down for dinner, do you really want that 9%, you know, 8 to 9% IPA? No. The beauty of having this much space and is... Well, if you come in to watch the Bruins game or something like that, too. Yeah. Toss yeah. back a few cream ales. Yeah. Right, like, right, exactly. You're gonna have like three double IPAs and like stumble out of here. <laughs> right. We're like, hey, sit right. down for sit down for a couple hours and have six of them and yeah, go on with your day. Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> go go back to work. <laughs> One of the things that we've consistently talked about doing is being able to produce beer that you know, er, there's something we want something for everyone. Yeah. yeah. You know, we don't want just people that you know line up at Treehouse or something right. looking for right. IPAs and. Yeah. We want people to. Oh, well, that wouldn't be so bad. It wouldn't be bad, but at the same time, like it, it, it wasn't our concept. It wasn't our concept. Yes. Yeah, and I, and yes. I, yeah, and I think that concept was true even when we first interviewed you. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. like you wanted to have right, like something for everyone. Like the beer you're drinking now. The Heffy, yeah, the yeah. Hef, Sun Drink. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I actually know that you drank that. Yeah, at I did. our first interview. Yeah, I drank and this. I think I drank the cream ale, yeah. and then one of the we had a, there was a stout. Saison, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it's great. <laughs> uh, Danielle, I'm curious. You came from Lone Pine, right? You known for brewing IPAs. Uh, were you pumped to come here and not brew IPAs? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I knew I'd get Let's it. Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure she said that. I was like, we're. we're yeah. Yeah. We're brewing a lager. Can we yeah. brew lagers? Yeah. Yes. Oh my God, we're brewing lagers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is so exciting. And I, you guys have talked to enough <laughs> brewers that uh, I'm going to just speak for Danielle here, but we love brewing lagers. Yeah. And stuff, you That's know? awesome. Mm-hmm. As we could say, you can dump hops into anything to right. mask mistakes, but when you have a beer that's clear and crisp and clean, no mistakes, yeah. it really can showcase what you do yeah, as a absolutely. brewer. And yeah. I'm personally, I'm more proud of those beers than I am of IPAs. Definitely. Mm. I think we're in a in a cool situation being that we're a brew pub. We have a brew pub license, so um, you know, we're not distributing to stores. If you want to buy cans, you have to buy them at the restaurant, um, at least for now. Um, so we don't have, you know, those huge uh, production schedules. Where, right. You know, we have a little bit of, a, there's a little bit of play where, you know, if something, you know, we want to actually take our time, like, oh, you know, I'd like to let this logger another week. You know, we have that luxury. You have to be able to do that. Instead of being like, I need two pounds out to Pennsylvania. I need this out to New Hampshire last week. You know, we can kind of, you know, we have a, you know, the 10 barrel system and we can actually kind of take our time and tweak things until, you know, it's exactly what we want and release it, you know, to our customers. For instance, the beer you're drinking, Erica, Rambler, uh, we so let good. that condition a little longer. Nice. We had the labels ready, and Danielle and I told Dan, we're like, I think if we let it condition just a little bit longer, it would really make it that much better. And because we don't have these deadlines with distributors and stuff, yeah. we we're able to let that condition a little longer and turn into what it and is. The same token, we decided to brew that because of, uh, we were talking earlier about Sylvaticus Oblivion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we used to go up there and buy it and be like, dude, are you going to be in Amesbury? Go buy some Oblivion. Yeah. We were talking to Char- <laughs> Charlie Cummings from uh, Remnant. Uh, love Charlie. Yeah. I'm like, Charlie, yeah. we're going to yeah. be going up in a couple of weeks. And he's like, dude, get me some Oblivion too because yes. I haven't had it yet and I really want to try it. <laughs> oh, so we're like, yeah. we got it. We went up there, we had it. Like one of our brewers meetings, sitting there drinking. I'm like, man, we should make a Czech dark lager. Yeah, cool. We have Schilling's Czech dark lager. Yeah. We had theirs. We and had, of course, uh, I was like, Notch. I've never gotten to brew one of those before. Yeah. <laughs> we had knots. <laughs> we're like, we should brew one of these beers. Like, yeah. cool. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so we brewed it. Yeah. Yeah, you did a great job. It's yeah. fantastic. So thank you, thank you for giving that extra yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> now you just need to serve it in a two liter boot, and you'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, I was really happy when we first did the interview. You, you're, you're consistent. A year and a half later with what you said you don't want to release a product that is just to release a product right. you want to release something that's awesome and, and, and danielle you said something very similar in, in your interview with lone pine so I, I mean at that time i don't even know if your path had intersected but that that marriage between the two of you as brewers is is awesome to hear mm-hmm. that because i think yeah. a lot of times breweries are constrained by their deadlines you've you've worked that experience you know that you need to get you know oj out in a week because it's due <laughs> you know or um the beer that you guys are putting out consistently is excellent and it conditions well i was joking i had a one of your beers that was in the fridge 
a long time. Not a long time, but a little bit longer than I probably wanted it to be. I think you said back of the fridge. Yep. Back yep. of the fridge. <laughs> right. I did. You know what? Call me up. Back of the fridge. Um, but having it still, it's it's fresh. It tasted good. Um, it's delicate. You know, the flavors were still there. Um, you're right. You can't hide behind a cream ale. Uh, is that something that, you know, going forward is, you know, when your popularity grows with the brand, it's is that something you want to continue to do? Uh, very important to both of us because Danielle and I have talked um, numerous times and, you know, there's been occasions where I, I know for me, I'm like, I, I need to get out of here. And it's like, no, we need to do this. And it's just like, it's our reputation. It, what yeah. the customer gets is everything. You know, yeah. it, it's the brewery's reputation. As a brewer, it's your reputation. You know, not that mm -hmm. we're planning on going anywhere, but it's like, <laughs> it, it, it does travel with you as a person. Sure. So, you know, if you're, if you're trying to produce a light beer and they're like, ah, oh, there's diacetyl, you know, they, they make a good beer, but let it sit too long, mm -hmm. you start yeah. noticing the off flavors. You know, we do take the precautions of doing as much, you know, QC as we possibly can with just the two of us. And yeah. I mean, when we've, you know, we don't have a, a some equipment that would make you know, it's expensive. That's why we're Cheese new. Cheese equipment is expensive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for sure. We take all the precautions to keep the beer as consistent as possible and not to introduce anything. Yeah. And yeah. you know, that's sort of where um, her background and mine come together, where we we can take these precautions. And yeah. she might notice something that I don't notice, and I might notice something she doesn't notice. So that you know, even though we don't have an inline DO meter. When we have Ironheart come in package, they're like, wow, your readings are spot on. We're like, because yes. we're taking you know, <laughs> every precaution possible to keep that beer as fresh it is, as it is when you're having it now. Yeah. And if you took that home in cans, you know, we want it to be the exact same experience. Yeah. That's our goal for every single beer that's produced here. I mean, consistency is very important right. as a whole for the business. So, right. mm -hmm. you know, um, is the music the same volume when you come in? Is the yeah. food always the same when you come right. in as far as quality wise? Portions the same size? The beer should always taste great. It right. should always be fresh. Yeah. So yeah. there's been a few brews that have gone down the drain here yep. uh, because of issues. And it was, you know, is some of the stuff passable? Of course it is. Would some breweries still sell it? Probably. Yeah. Yep. We chose not to, and it's not fun dumping <laughs> 10, 10, 20 barrel batch of beer. It's yeah. a yeah. lot of labor. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of product. And yep. you have to do it because that, in the end, somebody can come in for the first time and drink that beer and just be like, hey, this is And that's what subpar. they think of it as. Uh, yeah. And never yeah. come back or tell yeah. their friends, hey, I went there and I had a junk beer. Um, right. We definitely don't want that. So. Especially like Commander and uh, Sundrip. Mm -hmm. You know, those have been on draft most yeah. of the existence of us yeah. being open. And you, Matt, you might tell your friend, be like, oh, you got to go try this cream ale. And then they come in and it's a different batch. It doesn't right. taste good. Yeah. I mean, what, what good is that for the business? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, consistently better, the cream ale. I mean, every time I've gotten it, it seems like each batch gets better. Um, obviously, the original recipe that I had, you brewed on a, what, a one five barrel, barrel, one barrel system? One barrel sure. system, yep. Um, Guys, I, I, I can't say enough good things, positive things about what you guys are doing as a brewery. Thank you. Um, yeah. I mean that. I mean, if you listen to a lot of breweries episodes, I don't, you know, I don't <laughs> bow down to everyone. I mean, uh, but it's it's humbling to see what you guys are able to do in a pandemic and consistently make the right choices for right. a brewery. You know, yeah. a lot of breweries, like you said, are going to push the liquid out because... They're desperate, They're desperate for they money need, and not whatever desperate, else. Yeah, but it's just, yeah. and that, not that that's wrong, or, or, but to keep your original, and I wish we had the audio to release. I mean, you guys said this a, a, a year and a half ago, two yeah. years ago, so it's it's true. Um, I'll cheers to that. Say it than to do it because no. dumping that down. The I'm drain sure that was like a nice difficult to, heart, to watch. Like just, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I swear, yeah. I'm like, I'm leaving the room. Just dump it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of those things where you're just like, yeah. you exhaust every every possible opportunity. You try like, everything to save it, yeah. Read, talk to people, you know, Danielle will call every single person she knows. It was definitely one of those, of course, when we fired up the brew house, it was, the first, it was brand new construction. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Um, you know, everything just been wired, plumbed, everything was brand new. 
And, um, you know, once you start running things, you're like, oh, wait, that's backwards. That's backwards. Oh, right. Oh, so start it's, learning all the quirks. You know, kind of that else. getting opened up yeah. jitters. So I think um, it actually worked out better. For, I mean, we were slated to open in March, and then, of course, got pushed back to May. But having that extra couple of months to get the entire brew house working, um, getting everything working the way that we wanted it to, actually, I think, was beneficial for us. Yep. Yeah. What would we find out that one of the filters was plumbed backward? Yeah. Were, for oh, our, we, yeah. And, we were having, and we were having trouble knocking out we were because trying to, yeah. the water flow was fighting itself, so yeah. we just couldn't flow enough. So we couldn't, if for anyone who doesn't understand what knocking out is, we couldn't cool down that wart as quickly as we possibly could. Oh, and that happened for our first three brews. And wow. we're just like, why can't we do this? We yeah. have what's all going of the on? best right? equipment here. Right. Like everything. Like, like, I'm pretty sure I problem? know what I'm doing. Yeah. I don't know why. I can only get it to 100 I know. I remember, the, I remember the first brew day and we're like all excited. You're a little nervous and stuff, especially yeah. me, like my first commercial brew. Right. Like, all right, this is great. And then we, everything went fine. It was good. We hit our numbers as best we could on a new system, right. and <laughs> we're knocking out. And Daniel's like, uh, "It's going into the fermenter at 140 degrees." Oh, cool! Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's. And I'm like, not I was to like, happen. "Is the glycol all the way open? Is the cold water?" Because we are, we've, uh, again, another another luxury we have here is uh, glycol and uh, and cold water going to the heat X, which is great. Nice. But so no reason that yeah, it should be, it should should be, be right at temperature. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, our glycol's at like 75 degrees right now. Like, yeah. And of course, we were brewing a light beer, and I was like, things going to taste like cabbage. Oh my god, <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> Seriously. Um, so I'm curious, brew pub, right? So what what are you serving for food here? Um, is is the food based around the beer? Is the beer based around the food? Or doesn't yeah, even matter. I mean, uh, yeah. Definitely based around the beer for the most part. Um, we don't have super like carb heavy food. You're not gonna come in here and order like a 22 ounce ribeye, uh, but we do have some lighter meals. We have four entrees. We have a number of sandwiches, a number of appetizers. So it's elevated pub food, and we do incorporate awesome. our beer like you would expect. So mm -hmm. uh, beer cheese. We um, have chocolate sauce. Chocolate sauce. Yes. Chocolate sauce that we use. Shout out to Ezra Gold, <laughs> our head chef, who yeah. is amazing. Shout out. Yeah. It's been pretty cool working with him as well in terms of um, we like to uh, have certain things from the kitchen that incorporate the different uh, different beers that we have. So like yeah. we have a modern age, our Irish stout um, did a chocolate, like a modern age chocolate sauce. Mm -hmm. um, marshmallow with a mauler. Did a marshmallows, yes. uh, <laughs> which were really cool. Yeah. And if, if, we're, if we ever have, you know, we're conditioning something on like cacao nibs or something like, We'll give them to the kit. We'll give them to Ezra, and we'll say, "Hey, is there any way you can use these? Do you want them?" And he's like, "I'll figure something out. I'll play yeah. around with it." There's a baking awesome. staff here. You know, they'll play around with it, and it's been good. A lot of things don't go to waste, which is that's cool. Yeah. Which and is yeah. nice. he's been braising uh, pork belly with IPA. Yeah, oh, nice. something we've, which is something we've done since day one. Which that's was, awesome. Yeah. I remember we first opened, got a bunch of really good pictures. Yeah. Um, you mean the IPA cheese that you were the only one who loved it? It was. I think we should make it again. It was delicious. Bring it um, back. Bring it back. Even, uh, even yesterday, um, I had opened up uh, the tank that had the uh, the car bomb stout in it and pulled out the. I had two mesh bags with Jameson soaked oak chips. Yep. And I went in the kitchen and was like, "Hey, Ezra, because we have a smoker." I was like, uh, "If we dry these out." Um, you could probably smoke something with them that would probably yeah. taste pretty cool. It's yeah. like, never done that, we should try it. So it's we, uh, between the brewery and the kitchen, we're both, uh, you know, very into what we do, but also experimenting. Yeah, being creative like, and working together. Oh man, like we could yeah. do- like, He was so have, pumped for that. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were talking about too, doing, awesome. a, <laughs> doing a hot pepper beer at some point. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Doing a spicy like Pilsner. Yeah, yeah, Do it. yeah, uh, yeah. We're talking to him and he's like, oh, you should try these peppers and those. I'm like, I haven't even heard of these before. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, oh, this would give you that flavor. He's, he's very educated as yeah. far as flavor profile. Gives it a different, it, it's another resource for us as brewers yeah. to use. For sure. Because we don't, I know, I don't necessarily think of food in some of these ways that he does. And right. Explain something like, oh, okay, or like how to match flavors and yeah. stuff. And I'm like, oh, all right. I mean, she, she's sommelier so she knows flavors a lot better than I do and stuff and I'm like oh you know I, I take it like it, I like food educational moment yeah yeah. yeah 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 I definitely draw a lot on uh, like cocktail menus I used to write um, when mm -hmm. I worked in New York City so I'll think of these 
you know, flavor pairings. And uh, it's also good to, like, just, just sourcing ingredients. It's like, hey, I need to get these weird ingredients in bulk. And he's like, I got a guy for that. Like, yeah. it's nice. really cool to He'll kind of... He'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really awesome to have that. That's cool. It, yeah. So now that I'm starving, <laughs> I think we need to take a quick break for our sponsors so I can eat some food. Are you a solo artist, band, podcaster, or anyone else who needs recording services? Well, we got a place for you where your vision can become a reality. Welcome to Small Pond Studios, built by hand with heart and sweat equity by musicians for musicians. Go to smallpondstudios.io to reach out to get more information. And make sure you let them know that Brute sent you. Hey, Sound Guy Ryan here. Didn't know if you heard, but we're a part of the Hopped Up Network. There you'll find other informative podcasts about beer. So go ahead, follow them on social media, and visit them on their website, hoppedupnetwork.com, to learn more about the people, beer, and breweries from around the country. And until next time, thanks for listening. Cheers. All right, so we're back, and this is not the second take, or third, or third. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm I'm ex- I'm excited for what's next for e- for everyone here at Faces. Um, you know, nice weather and COVID restrictions kind of easing up a bit. Yeah, people yeah. getting vaccinated. Um, I hate to ask the question, what's next for you? What's in your future? What's I don't want to ask what's your five year plan, but <laughs> what's what's next for Faces? Um, you know, ten months into being open, eleven months into being open. Aside from being back open, uh, oh open for good for the first time. Uh, we'd really like to see where that goes, but we have plans for this room specifically. And for anybody who can't see it, um, this room is a few steps up from our main area and it's our tasting room. Uh, the whole design is that it's for our beers only up here, whereas yep. the front bar is all liquor, wine, cocktails, and our beer. Yep. Uh, we'd like to expand this room to about two, three times the size. So we'd like to carry it out to the street out what? back here and have it be like a roof deck where we can open up doors, windows, and have it be a larger size. So it could, would really bring the outdoor environment in and make it like, you know, those places they go that open up garage doors and everything else. Right. That would be our backspace. So I approve. Nice. So you're saying you, <laughs> you don't have to go to Boston to have like that cool ambiance. You can have it here at Faces. You know, I... I don't think so. I mean, I think this building's got a ton of character. I do oh, too. Yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah. it's sure. worth the trip here regardless. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When we talk to customers here, it's from all over. North Shore, South Shore, New Hampshire, Boston. We have people that come in on Friday, Saturday nights. Like, yeah, we were in Boston for a bit and we decided to come in here. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what you want to hear. Yeah. 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 We uh, talked about the patio and how we heard rumors and that's why the if anyone had come here last year you saw, you know, the patio we had. That we was opened ne- up last week. Yeah. Yeah. Right, that was, that was parking ne- the parking lot originally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was never, like Dan was saying, that was never the plan. The plan was yeah. eventually, let's see how it goes the first year. Yeah. You know, so it's sort of like, all right, put that on pause. Let's go. This is first year. Yeah. How that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the brewery right now is underneath us. And by expanding this room, we can also expand the size of the brewery. So gotcha. if we have more demand. We can get more tanks. Our mm-hmm. chiller is big enough. Uh, we can make more product, have more space to can, because we're pretty tight right now canning. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What? And you guys are, are now mobile canning. You mentioned Ironheart earlier. We use Ironheart. Yeah. 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 yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, so. yeah they've been great. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things that I think is awesome here is uh, I love to go to breweries and, and just enjoy the brewery atmosphere. Um, coming here with my girlfriend, who is a non-beer drinker, the knowledge of your staff, the beer tenders that you have here is, is excellent. So you, I think you guys do a great job educating Thank your 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 beer staff um, was that important for you guys early on or uh so with our experience um my brother anthony's wife's been in the industry for a long time bartending uh we brought back some bartenders that we had from the bowling alley back in the day so we really brought a lot of the staff in that was very knowledgeable very smart people yep. that have been doing it for a long time it's also great to have a little bit of trust in this industry for um, sure. so you bring some new people in and they're surrounded by like i've been working for these guys for like five six years and they're like 
Okay. Well, we're gonna <laughs> make sure we're on our A game, but yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of bartenders are hurting right now in these times. Yeah. A lot of servers are. So um, to bring people in here where we're doing some good business, uh, they're doing pretty well here right now too. So it's like, don't screw it up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're very passionate though. Like we, we educate them about all the new beers that are coming out. Yeah. And we'll write up a little description of what you should be tasting. And if people come in and they say, you know, sometimes it's as simple as hey, I usually drink Bud Light, what should I get? And we're yeah. going to direct them toward, hey, we have the Hells, we have um, Deletion, mm -hmm. we have the Cream Ale. These are some light ones. If you want to try any of them, we can try them out. Yeah, the bar staff's never afraid to ask Danielle or I, what, like, what do I, I do? Don't know what, yeah, I don't, <laughs> what is this new beer? Yeah. Like, how do I, you know, how do I sell it? What do I tell people? Is it Hells or Hellas? You're like, right. All right. Is it half or heffy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is it half or heffy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm excited for what's next for you guys. I mean, I think it's going to be really awesome. The Whatever space, you guys end up doing. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. the space has a lot of character, like you said, and uh, opens up a community aspect that I think... Um, Malden needs. I mean, there's a lot of great restaurants around here, but um, to kind of do your one-stop shopping, you know, your drink, your your food, and and atmosphere, all in one place, all in one place yeah. that has the disguise of a brewery, but it's really you know a, a brew pub that that's that's firing on all cylinders is a a feather in your cap. I, I really think so. Uh, Thank you. Cheers to you guys for yeah. for doing this. Um, it's really cool to see in our area. Um, I am curious, though, beer-wise, uh, any styles that you haven't touched on that you want to brew next? Well, we have some stuff coming up if you guys want to talk about the next styles. beer we're making is a Kolsch. Oh, nice. Cool. Nice. Cool. Summer of Kolsch. Cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, I think we're just trying to uh, do a little bit of everything at this yeah. point. Yeah. Know, yeah. Like, well, what do you want to brew? And, you know, like I said, we kind of have that luxury of being yeah. like, what do you want to brew? Yeah. Okay, let's give that a try. Like, we have nice. a small... Barrel projects. Ooh. Stuff. Cool. Yep. We have a collab coming We have a collab com that's going to be released when it's done that uh, we started last November with oh, wow. Remnant. Nice. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah, it was released. Uh, yeah. We released it. Um, yeah. Non barrel aged. Non barrel yeah. aged. Yeah. But we gave it a little. Some bugs in it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. What was that yeah. again? Remind remind us. Bugs. No, the uh, the, the beer the, the beer with remnant. It was like a cream. It was like retrograde. Retrograde. Yeah. Retrograde. Yeah. It retrograde. It was a dark saison. Dark saison. So close, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't remember. Danielle picked up uh, several Chardonnay barrels. Right? No, Ooh. it was um, Cabernet. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And put a bunch of it, most of it, in barrels yep. and. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's Charlie's been in there about since November. Yeah, it's not oh, surprised hearing Charlie wants crazy. to do something Charlie's like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie's been coming down. We've been pulling the nails, and we're like, ah, this, you know, barrel two. That's you know. Yeah. We'll oh, believe it or not, like Eddie and Charlie were a little bit more conservative. Danielle and I are just like funky, sour, <laughs> yeah. everything. We're just like throw it all in. It there. doesn't <laughs> taste like a horse was sleeping in it yeah. last night. <laughs> Let's just say Eddie was out for a little bit and Charlie wasn't here, so <laughs> we'll see how it ends up. <laughs> That's great. One or, one or two bugs might have been added to some of those barrels. Yes. Uh, a couple. <laughs> we see a ton of breweries. I think, I, think, I think every day I see a new brewery doing a collaboration with, a, with a, another brewery. Uh, what's your honest opinion of collaborations? Do you like them? What's the worst part of it? What's the best part of it? I mean, I'll, you guys can give the actual opinion of brewing the beer with them. Yeah, but. I mean, I like them a lot. It's always yeah. like, you always want to see other people's brew houses. You want to see how mm -hmm. they have things set up. There's a, you know, it, there's always a different way to do something or a better way to do something or a way that you're like, I would definitely not do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, <Good on> you. <laughs> and um, I mean, every, every time I've, you know, either gone to somebody's brewery or had people come here, there's always a learning experience. Yeah, for like, sure. Oh, that's so cool. I wouldn't, I would have never thought to do it that way. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, having a fresh set of eyes, a different opinion. Um, I mean, that's, you know, since we didn't have uh, brew festivals this year, which nice. is usually like the time to come together and be like, yeah. guys, I haven't seen you all year because we brew beer for a living and right. we're always busy. We're always busy. Um, <laughs> so just being able to have that little like, you guys want to come brew beer with me? We can talk about beer. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> want to hang out? Well, we already have a second collaboration scheduled with Lashu. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Icarus. 
Uh, yeah, second one with Icarus. Then we yeah. did... Because um, that was the first power. beer that you guys released in cans. I want with Icarus, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And now they're, they're gonna Jason, their head brewer, he texted me not too long ago. They're doing a collab um, around here. Cool. In May, and he was like, "Hey, right, let's do round two because yeah. New Jersey's laws during COVID. We've been trying to do something. My I have family down in New Jersey, so I get down to them all the time. Yeah." And he was like, it's not look, I mean, the same thing with like going to Maine, there was the travel restriction. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. But like we have a lot of connections because of Danielle up in Maine and things just didn't work out. So it was a lot more local right. stuff. Yeah. yeah, we're trying to figure something out with Definitive still because we have a good relationship with them. Cool. Cool. Uh, they're kind of waiting until the COVID thing's over, but we just did Exhibit A. We did uh, Bentwater. Yeah. Water. They and just went out awesome. and um, brewed a Pink Boots beer. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. The exhibit A on oh. International Women's Day on the eighth. So sweet. We have a. What did you brew? A West Coast style IPA. All right. But, uh, <laughs> with uh, with honey. Ooh, actually. Oh cool. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hell yeah. That's but cool. Colleen, Caitlin, Mackenzie. Yeah. Um, we got a bunch of uh, locally sourced honey. Awesome. Um, from an apiary in Billerica and a little bit from Maine as well. Okay. Um, cool. But cool. Uh, I'm really excited for that beer. I think it's going to be yeah, really awesome. Yeah, definitely. Shout out yeah. to Kenzie. We've been, we've been learning you. a lot about honey in the past couple of months. <laughs> yes. So we'll, be, we'll be putting that on draft here, even though we brewed it in uh, yep. exhibit. exhibit. Yeah. So we'll have that available. Something to look too. forward to. I didn't. It was all her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, so, yeah, I kind of want to segue. I'm always kind of curious why breweries choose the certain ingredients they choose. Like I heard you're working with proximity for your malt. Um, you know, why that or what, versus something else or. Do, do we want. Is this, is this where we avoid this question? Is this yeah. a question? This is the question. Do we want the okay. honest okay. opinion? Okay. Cool. The honest no, answer? No, no, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll ask we'll one that they wanted to do. I mean, yeah. we can answer. Happens. Ingredients in general will answer. <laughs> okay. But, um, I, I mean, you're looking for specific, like for instance, some places all, only do like floor malted mm -hmm. uh, grains may taste different than a flavor profile. Yeah, the flavor profile. Uh, yeah, efficiency, uh, efficiency, the extract uh, percentage, cost. and all that stuff. Cost. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things that factor into it. I mean, specific companies, not so much. You yeah. know, it just depends. A lot of these companies, you're not working with Wireman, uh, for instance, but you'll be working with BSG. Right. BSG yeah. has Wireman. Yeah. Right. So you are using BSG, whereas, gotcha. you know, proximity may have the same oats as BSG, but their cost for shipping might be a little better. I like working with Brees. I have a good relationship mm -hmm. with Mike. Cool. Um, so I think we're going to be working with them more going forward. And yeah. then always, um, because we do like switch up styles a lot, BSG is an easy, you know, they yeah. carry, carry everything from all yeah. over the place. So it's pretty yeah. easy to be like, eh, German malt, English malt, yep. yeah. <laughs> that one. Okay, done. Definitely. Um, you just said too, though, it depends on delivery drivers, salespeople that you deal with, mm -hmm. how easy a company is to work with, billing. It's it's everything bundled, bundled into one. So, right. Uh, <laughs> that makes like sense. You said efficiency of product, yeah. quality of, you know, yep. availability of flavors. Yeah. Yeast, Eddie. Uh, yeah. That's your specialty. Are you still uh, cultivating yeast or is that something that. Yeah. Um, I do. Uh, <laughs> we've used. We've used. My uh, sun drip is the only one that we use my yeast in, and um, most of the reason why is COVID uh, <laughs> was the start and consistency. Yeah. So uh, my yeast is banked at Omega, and Omega mm -hmm. shut down at the start of COVID, so we started using other yeast, gotcha. and we didn't want to change it up, and we found that we liked um, how so the other yeasts we were using were developing with the profile of the beers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we never change them around. We don't intend on changing them around. And, you know, if we ever find an area or a beer that we're looking to, you know, try something out in, you know, it's just yeast is just as important as any other ingredient in the beer. Yeah. So, you know, it's just all about what fits into what you know we tried one yeast once that i had made into a beer we didn't like it yeah um it wasn't bad or anything but we just didn't like the profile that it gave that specific beer so we didn't use it again easy enough <laughs> and you know it, it is that you know it, it's yeah. as simple as that so where you know 
It's just about certain people loved it. Right. It's just it wasn't the direction we were going for right. for that. Gotcha. Brand. So it's just a matter yeah. of matching the flavor profiles, you know, and you. Um, you but know, also, you used uh, your Bretts for uh, the collab. Yep, the Bretts yep. that. You and know. then uh, we've even had situations where we had trouble getting, you know, we were doing sour beer. Yep. And we had to grow some stuff. Yeah, right? we, and, I, uh, that's we one of the. went to Shameless Plug, Beer and Wine Hobby. Yeah. Boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do um, all of our sour beers. I do actually grow up the, yeah. the lacto pitches from small pitches because we found that it works. Mm, Easy yeah. enough, yeah, and it's that just, works. I mean, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. so far. So, so, yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. But, yeah, I mean, and especially with you have two people running an entire brew house and a brewery program. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, adding a run a full-time yeast lab on top of that is kind of impossible. <laughs> we yeah. would have to hire a few more people. Yeah. Um, so yeah. for now, um, it's just yeah. like. Well, that's why we like, had like those, like the sun drip yeast is like, it's banked. We can just call, they <laughs> culture it up and it's just like, there's no question. Yeah. I, I guess that's uh, for things to add to when what's next for faces is uh, definitely beefing up staffing in a number of places, brewery included, to get seller people in. So anyone looking for a seller in job, um, hint, hint, at some point we will do that because <laughs> even from the past few weeks, we're like, we have to start making beer. Like the past three weeks have been crazy. That's where it was awesome. a little bit slower before. And now Good we're for like, you guys. That's we awesome. We need beer. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot here, but it's going very fast. So yeah. We're selling. Yeah. Some weeks we're selling 13, 14 barrels of beer in a weekend. So we're like, That's we crazy. need to start. Yeah. Right. Considering we have a 10 barrel system, so. Jesus. Start using it. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> turns on turns. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so I want people to, uh, you know, take that, you know, 13 barrels that you're selling on a weekend to 20 barrels on a weekend. Where can people find you? Um, right here, right at right 50 here. Pleasant Street, Malden. <laughs> yeah, and uh, on online. Uh, online, uh, it's curbside pickup. Yep. So even if you want to order food and you want to order beer, you want to order merch, all curbside pickup. Come in, pick it up, check it out too. It's up to you. Or sit down, grab a bite to eat, grab a couple of beers, yep. and then take a four pack home. So and that's, we have 17 styles right now in cans and bottles. Wow. Yeah. Nice. nice. So. And that's faces.com or facesbrewing.com. Okay. Cool. Faces. Awesome. And social media at Faces Brewing. Yeah. So our Instagram, we're super active. So if people are ever wondering, on a random day, hey, it's really nice out on a Friday. Is your patio open? We always post that stuff. <laughs> yeah, you I do. think that, uh, right at that. Is that Faces Brewing? At Faces Brewing. At Faces. At Faces Brewing for Instagram as well. Yeah. 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 We, have a, we have a Facebook. We have, uh, sorry, that's for Instagram. Yeah, yeah. We have a Faces, uh, Facebook too. Do you have MySpace or no? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Zynga? We yeah. have a Zynga. Zynga. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, what was your AM screen name when you were younger? No, yeah, right. <laughs> We don't have an OnlyFans. Oh. Damn it! <laughs> We're trying to get We're Sound Guy okay. Ryan to have one, we but are. they don't. He's not. He's not. Bi he's not biting. <laughs> it would only well, be like two dollars a month, though. It'd be worth it. <laughs> Yo, I'm worth way more than that. Uh, whatever. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> it's not just a piece of meat. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, Ryan. For two dollars, he might be. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Ryan. We should respect you more. You're right. You're right. Absolutely. You're right. <laughs> um, so I want to know what you all want to learn more about. Either is uh, brewing or running a business? I, I think everyone here probably wants to know. I mean, we all want to know more. So mm -hmm. it's probably not in your area of expertise. I know how every piece of equipment works downstairs. I would brew the worst beer you've ever had. <laughs> but I can tell you what it does and how it works. That's why I have these guys on board. But I don't want to take over their job. Mm -hmm. I think they do a great job. I do love learning everything new. So, um, I don't know what you guys think. I, I, You're good? You don't want to learn anything new? No, I, <laughs> no, I mean... I know everything. Obviously, <laughs> obviously I mean, you've learned a ton more from Danielle, and I'm sure yeah. Danielle's learned some things from you, too. Yeah, I mean, I just... You know, the saying goes, you know, e education is never finished. Yep. There's always something, I mean, you know, what happens if we become super successful this year and <laughs> we need to start thinking, like, hey, a 40-barrel brew house, that's different than a 10-barrel yeah. brew house. I mean, 20-barrel brew house is different than a 10-barrel brew house. You know, it, it doesn't... Scaling is not one-to-one. -one. It's not linear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's no yeah. linear Very exponential scale. It's not baking. Right. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. there's always something to learn. Mm -hmm. um, every style is different. Every time you brew it, yep. it's a little different. And um, 
I definitely like to learn more about um, wild beers and barrel aging. I, I, we've done them. We know, I know what is expected of them and how to do them, but there's always those little nuances that you... Yeah, they're uh, tricky. Yeah. It's living. <laughs> well, I'd love it if we had a cool ship. Yes. If we had a cool ship, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Ooh. Well, we're talking even, even stuff... Um, Efficiency-wise, we've talked yeah. about doing new process piping here yeah. yep. to help us out with up and downstairs, and we're like, yeah. we could weld this up. We could do that. Yeah. I was just going to yeah. say. No, no, yeah. so, we're, so we're like, in, uh, we've done a number of things, even this week. Hey, we can cut the hoses down. Yep. We can make it more efficient doing this and that. So you said yesterday, you're like, hey, it's just another couple things off the list. I'm like, yeah, but the list keeps on getting longer. <laughs> but it is one step every day to make your life easier and mm -hmm. make the product come out better in the end. Yeah. One less yeah. thing to expose it to air or this or that. You know? For sure. Uh, everything from pressure regulators to, hey, it would have been better if we set one up over here. Well, we can do that. Right. Uh, just yeah. like even like how we clean the tanks up here in the tap room is different than we may have been doing it a year ago. Mm -hmm. You know, it just as time has progressed, we learn how to make Do things it better, more efficient, make yeah. things, you know, yeah. better. Yeah. I'm going to in the same boat. Like, I always want to know everything about everything. <laughs> I'm always getting yes. my, I'm like, well, what is that? How can I do that? Like, that's yeah. how I got into brewing. <laughs> what are you doing back yeah. there? I, oh, I'm going to do that. Yep. <laughs> we hired you to run the tap room. Yeah, but no, I'm going to do this. And like, um, even like, I think last year Dan and I both had a little experience, like stick welding. We were uh, Dan wanted to. Oh, we were making. The old, no, I was about so to Dan, say, so Dan, God, Dan God bless you, stick. Dan bought a Jesus. welder, and the two of hey, us were in the, par the two of us were in the a parking lot thing. MIG yeah. welding, and we were like, we oh we we can MIG weld. We were like, we could learn how to TIG Got weld. This. I was like, yeah. then we can make our own brewing equipment. This is gonna be great. <laughs> but it's did, always, uh, you know. Did I'm you like, get the welder sunburn? Yes. Oh, yes. Flash so bad. Oh, yeah. is so, flash burns. It is so bad. They're like, you should wear gloves. I'm like, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Lesson just kind learned. of yeah. wanting to be involved Using in those every OSHA step of certified the glasses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome. This this question's really for for Dan and Eddie. I'm curious. Um, when we first talked, um, is faces and on uh, you know March 17th. 2021 what you visioned envisioned you know in 2019 when we talked i think every day that we were in construction we kind of it was a design build uh that had a lot to do with i mean brewing's no different vision wise than we were planning on we brought danielle on which we didn't envision but it's been invaluable to us yeah. to bring her on as well um i don't know where we'd be without her and eddie here however as far as this went we had a good idea to start and that kind of stuff was on track functionality wise but as far as design wise that makes a big difference when customers walk in the door how to keep them there how to sit them in a comfortable seat yeah uh, how to serve people properly how to set everything up there's a real science to that stuff and we changed ideas every single day and it wasn't like it was like big time but it was all for the better so every day yeah. this project got better yeah. and better from just being here every day and of what course. can we do there? What can we do in that wall? You know, yeah. mm -hmm. should we put <laughs> reclaim wood there like every other place? Should we put whatever? Do we um, want community tables? A sweet yeah. <laughs> and um, it ended up really good. Uh, yeah. And especially, you know, without my brothers involved and my sister involved, like it wouldn't have turned out the way it did because everyone kind of has their own area of expertise and it really came together very nicely, functionality wise and design wise. Because sometimes yeah. you have to sacrifice them for each other a little bit to get the overall feel and environment and still function well as a business. For sure. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for yeah. doing this today. <laughs> yeah. uh, this has been great. We have nice guys. question, right? Yeah, yeah just the last question. question. Um, we wanted to end our interviews with what are you most proud of? In general? Yeah, just, just Oh, being open, open and being <laughs> successful during the pandemic and just looking forward to the future. And that's awesome. in all areas. That's... Yeah. You know, being proud of all of the employees that we have here and representing our business well, being proud of our beer, being proud of our food. Um, just happy to come into work every day. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. I think the uh, I think the quality of the beers that we're putting out 
under the circumstances is probably, I mean, like, as we said earlier, um, even like the first beer went to knock it out. It's 140 degrees. Like <laughs> they're um, definitely on the brew house. Yeah. There was a lot of pivot, pivot. Yes. You know, when you're like, okay, everything's running great. And then something else was like, oh, that's backwards. And then you fix that. So there was a lot of, um, you know, just making things work. It's kind of been like a year of like figuring it out, making things work and just uh, being able to um, produce the kind of beers that we're putting out under all of those circumstances. Um, it's pretty impressive. I'm pretty happy sure. with uh, what we're doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of the consistency of the product and how the our core beers are that we've been brewing multiple times have been improving. Definitely. They're not, not to the point where they're unrecognizable, mm -hmm. but the quality has increased. For and sure. That our customer base has noticed that and has been able to reflect that back to us. Yeah. Yeah. And efficiency. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The efficiency <laughs> of the brew house. <laughs> we were taking Ultra Wave and uh, Progression, which are like two of our like the biggest selling beers, just single IPAs. And I'm like, we used to get like 10 kegs out of this, and we just got like 16 kegs out of this. Like, nice. It's unbelievable. It's like, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. awesome. That's huge. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and it's, it's great to see that. Um, that's nice. Yeah. For a couple of reasons. For one, you're not running out of that beer as quickly. You don't have to brew it again. Right. Or do a double brew. Right. And on top of that, I mean, that's that's dollars right there, too. So. Exactly. Uh, it's great. Awesome. Well, I'm pretty confident that Eddie is not going to e email me or text me in, in a month and say, don't release the episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we really hope. We, we really hope. Um, but thank you for doing this today. Uh, yeah. I'm glad that we finally got to, you know, talk yeah. face to face instead of... You know, Dan, you being in our live chat one night, <laughs> and you'd be like, yes. "What's up?" Or, or seeing you at Beer and Wine Hobby, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's good to kind of touch base and, and see people in, in public. And and um, I encourage all our listeners if you're in the area, um, there's a lot of great breweries in this area. You know, if yeah, you go make to a trip. Everett, you go to Malden. Um, there are breweries, but make sure you, you stop at Faces. Uh, Grab lunch. Know, grab lunch. Grab dinner. Some beers. Some beers. Yeah. Cocktail. I heard they're espresso right. martini. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is kind of showing you what a brewery can be. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't just have to be, you know, you go there and you have your communal table and trivia and, and pretzels. all that stuff. Um, <laughs> and this is a family friendly place. You don't, you let kids in here, right? You know? Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, no, I mean like. Why not? <laughs> no, I mean like this is a brew pub, you know, it's, this is a place that. It's for everyone. For everyone. Yeah. So uh, cheers. Until next time. Until yeah. next time. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, Brewers listeners, for uh, listening to this week's episode with our good friends over at Faces. It was an awesome episode. I really enjoyed it, and I'm just glad we finally got it out. Finally. Finally. <laughs> Uh, so stay tuned uh, till next week because we got another great episode coming up. An amazing episode. Yes, all the adjectives. All the adjectives there. All, all the sixth grade <laughs> adjectives. Yes. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, we'll see you on the other side. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.